Welcome back, Gadgeteers. Today we're going to talk again about the Raspberry Pi. If you watched my previous video, my son gave me a Raspberry Pi 2, and I went ahead and configured it and set it up. But lo and behold, it was very, very, very slow. Now, what I found out was the 32 gigabyte micro SD card that I installed was a class 4 micro SD card, which means it can read and write approximately 4 megabytes a second. The documentation on the raspberrypi.org website recommended at least a class 6 micro SD card. And as luck would have it, I went hunting around and I found in one of my tablets a micro SD card that was a class 10. So I went ahead and installed the Raspberry Pi OS on the class 10 card, which only took five minutes, which is about three times faster than the class 4 card. So it took well over 15 minutes to write to the class 4 card, where it only took five minutes, under five minutes, to write to the class 10 card. So, went ahead and booted it up. It's actually working really well. What you're seeing here is the actual Raspberry Pi. It's running right now. And this is a VNC connection. We talked about that in my previous video using virtual network computing. I am running a server on the Raspberry Pi, a VNC server, that I can connect to remotely on my main system. So that's what you're seeing right now. Now, what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and do an update because I've been doing some research and reading. And apparently, if you do an update to the Raspberry Pi, it will also update the firmware. And depending on how new the firmware is on this particular Pi, the H.264 codec is not enabled by default. So the uh, GPU is able to do hardware decoding and encoding of H.264. I don't know if it's actually on right now, so I'm going to go ahead and do the update process, which of course requires the command line, and I know how much some of you dislike the command line, but it's the only way you can do it with the Raspberry Pi, so we're going to have to do it. Anyway, we're going to do that update, and we're going to see if videos play better. So I've had so, so video playback but I can say with the class 10 card in that I've gotten much better playback than I did with the class 4 card when using YouTube with the class 4 card I would literally get freezes of 5 to 10 seconds every I would say two times a minute at least with the class 10 card I'm not seeing that if it does freeze it's usually only for a split second so my hope was doing the updates may make things run better. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Okay, so here is the official Raspberry Pi documentation. So we're going to go ahead and run through these steps. There's really only two. And I'm going to go ahead and become root because for me it's just easier so I don't have to do the sudo every time I run a command. So I'm going to do apt get update and there's my dog going crazy. She probably sees somebody else walking their dog. She gets all excited. So hopefully this won't take too long. One thing is for sure this card is so much faster. Hold on one second. Quiet, Pixer. Fix. Fix. Get in here. Come here. Come here. Get your butt in here. Come. Come on. Get in here. Come on. Come on. Come on, doggies. Come on, Fix. Good girl. Come here. Come here, baby. Come here. Whoa. Okay. You want to be in the video? Okay. All right. All right. Relax. All right. Pixie joined me. She was out there attacking whatever person was walking by with their doggy. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah. You're a good girl. I know you are. Anyway. Thank you, Pix. Okay. Be quiet. Anyway. 
the first step is done, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back to close up here and we're going to type apt-get, it's just Zachary, be nice, uh, dist-upgrade. And enter. This card is so much faster. I'm really happy with it. 30.2 megabytes, that's all. Two newly installed, zero to remove, and zero not upgraded. Only two packages. Well, let's see what we get picks. If this doesn't work, I think I'll do some more research on video playback and see what I can find out. Um, there's a lot of documentation available out there. I found so much information. Oh, hush. Shh, shh, quiet. I found so much information out there. And, hey, I'm trying to shoot a video here, buddy. No. She's mad because Meadow's at the door. Should we let Meadow in? Let's let Meadow in. Come here, Meadows! Come here, Meadow! There we are. Quiet picks. Okay, anyway. I'll look around for more documentation and see what I can find. I'm thinking that this problem should be able to be resolved, but it really depends. Um... It may be that the codec that's being used to deliver video now is one that the Raspberry Pi doesn't support. I've heard that you can get better playback using VLC from one of my viewers. Thank you for that. So I'll try VLC too and we'll see what happens. So we'll be back as soon as this update gets done and then we'll try watching some video and see what happens. All right, folks, looking at the, I went back here, scrolled back in the buffer. I'm actually getting 96 package upgrades and two newly installed and zero to remove. And the package size, the total for the archives is 348 megabytes. So I definitely misread that. So that's a fairly sizable uh, chunk of work. It says after it's all done, there will be 30.2 megabytes. Of additional disk space that I'll use but it's definitely pulling in quite a few packages now if I scroll back down <clears throat> it's about 44 percent of the way through with about 12 minutes 42 seconds remaining and that's a sizable chunk of updates so I'm just gonna let it run and then I'll come back uh, as soon as it gets done. So we'll be right back. Okay, the Raspberry Pi has been rebooted. Now I have my iPhone camera pointing at the actual screen. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open the web browser and pull up a YouTube video and just get an idea of how performance is, see if it's improved at all. I did get a message telling me that everything was updated and that. Uh, there may have been some changes that would overwrite some of my settings so I may have to change back some of my settings which is fine I was surprised there were quite a few updates. I think I'm gonna disconnect VNC because I don't want it to drag down my video playback so let's go here and we'll do an exit temporarily and we'll just grab a video and do a playback test, see if it's improved at all. Let's say for a moment that you're the kind of person who takes cybersecurity super serial. You use a password manager with multi-factor everything. You keep all your So far so good. I'm gonna make the screen a little bit bigger. Keeping a vigilant eye of phishing attacks. That is all really good stuff. Now, I'm not sure what the playback quality is. 480. This is actually playing back near perfect, and it wasn't before. Alright, I'm going to turn the sound level down. 
and we're going to try 720p. Wow. Yes, updates have made a huge change. So let's go ahead and go full screen, which before it, it wouldn't have handled at all. Interesting. Uh, the updates have made a huge difference. I mean, it's playing far smoother than it did before. While it's playing, I'm going to go ahead and connect using VNC and we'll see what happens. We'll see if it impacts video playback. Oh shoot, I forget. It always opens up on my other screen. Let's see if I can move it over here. Yep, I can. So you can see VNC playback is very slow. Um, so this is saying it's playing in auto. Nope, 720. Yeah, it is 720. It's very clear. I know you can't tell that on the... Uh, screen very well unfortunately on the iPhone because uh, it's just you're seeing a lot of uh, moir pattern from the TV I'm very impressed I cannot believe this little system is working this good Okay, so playback works surprisingly well now. I'm actually really happy with playback responsiveness. Uh, let's have a look really quickly here. I just want to check my preferences for Raspberry Pi configuration. I remember that I did make some changes here. Password was changed, of course. Uh, under scan, I disabled. I didn't touch pixel doubling and that's something new it wasn't on there before performance is still on high and I you know I had set GPU memory for 96 but now it's 112 I wonder if that's making any difference whatsoever so any of you Raspberry Pi aficionados out there if you know the answer to that let me know but with updates and the class 10 card this thing is working far more better than it was there's still a few things here and there that are a little slower um, but overall it's working great now there is one thing I did want to test and I'm gonna do SMB colon slash slash Fedora which is my main system that's running and I need to turn my TV back on because I'm going to try and do some video playback. So I need to have the Raspberry Pi up. Uh, I did some video playback and it was less than stellar. And I do have VLC installed. So, all right, I got to connect as a user. And what we're going to try is running a video. Um, you're not going to be able to really see how it looks and because I took down my iPhone but I will give you an update because I got the TV going right here so let's just run oh Season 1, Episode 1. Ooh, got to check for apps. I wonder if VLC was uninstalled. Oh, I had to redo the video card, so VLC would not be installed at all anymore. So let's go ahead and do it. sudo apt get install vlc wow 75 megabytes to install vlc everything is so much faster 
the updates have made a significant difference for YouTube videos. I want to have this little computer in here uh, so that I can make use of it and I'm thinking you know it's gonna be like that computer I can go and log in and do anything because I'll just leave it on it doesn't really draw enough power to worry about I remember the first time I installed VLC on that class 4 card it took it about 30 minutes so definitely good to know I just wondered if it could use the um, faster cards that require the different uh, controller for the micro SD card. I can't remember what they're called, but that would be especially nice. All right, it looks like it's installed. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. And don't be dismayed by playback. What you see is going to be absolutely disgustingly ugly. Um, I will tell you what it looks like because I'm watching the actual TV itself. Well, you're actually seeing the same thing I am. Uh, the screen is not updating at all. This is how it worked before. It, it basically would go gray like this, and I wasn't getting um, just any playback at all. We will try something else. Now, I don't think I... I think I have to buy the license for MPEG-2 decoding, um, which I have not done yet. It's actually pretty cheap, however. Oh, let's see. Probably not any point trying to play my Avengers Blu-ray, but I'll try it anyway. Well, I shrunk it down. Um... Yeah. I don't think it can play video. <laughs> um, you're seeing exactly the same thing I'm seeing, so... I'm getting like one frame every 10 or 20 seconds, and my CPU is pretty much maxed out. So that's something I'll have to experiment with. Alright, after looking around, I found out that there is a built-in player called OMX Player. It's command line based, so all I did was right-click one of the videos off of my Samba server that I wanted to play, and type in the command, and voila, I'm running full screen. It's playing output directly to HDMI, so there's literally no frame drops or no issues, and it's using the built-in GPU on the Raspberry Pi to play back the video, so the CPU is actually not that busy. Impressive that this little Raspberry Pi can play back 1080p so well without any frame dropping or issues. Overall, I am very pleased with this little system. I cannot believe that it's playing back YouTube so good. And uh, since I put in the new card, it's definitely much faster and definitely much more usable. So. If you have any other suggestions for me for the Raspberry Pi, I have the two, so let me know. I definitely would be happy to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. If you really enjoyed it, share it. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.